This is Business Week Armenia, Civilnet's weekly economic digest. Here's what you need to know this week. Armenia's monetary authorities have given their preliminary approval to the sale of one of the country's largest lenders, moving the more than $300 million deal one step closer to completion. The board has decided to give preliminary approval to the Bank of Georgia Group's acquisition of Amiria Bank, Armenia's central bank said in a press release this week, a key regulatory hurdle. Earlier this year, the Bank of Georgia Group, a holding company incorporated in the United Kingdom and listed on the London Stock Exchange's FTSE 250 index, said it had reached a $303.6 million deal to buy out Amiria Bank, pending shareholder and regulatory approval. Commenting on the deal, the Bank of Georgia Group chair said at the time, This transaction is a significant milestone for the group and a new chapter in our strategic development. Through Amiria Bank we are set to enter Armenia, one of the fastest growing economies in the region. For its part, Amiria Bank said the deal will allow it to continue to operate as a standalone entity within the Bank of Georgia Group, retaining its own brand name and corporate leadership. Amiria Bank is one of Armenia's largest lenders, with total assets at about $3.4 billion, compared to the Bank of Georgia Group's $11.7 billion. At present, Ruben Vartanyan, the billionaire businessman and philanthropist who is currently in detention in Azerbaijan, is Amiria Bank's single largest shareholder, owning 48.8% of the lender through a trust fund. The news of Amiria Bank's acquisition came just weeks after the United Kingdom-based financial giant HSBC said it will sell off its Armenian subsidiary, leaving Armenia with no Western commercial banks. Operations at a long-stalled gold mining project embroiled in environmental controversy may begin as soon as the end of the year, an Armenian official has indicated. The Amosar mine is expected to start production at the end of this year or the beginning of next year, lawmaker Bob Kantunyan said this week, providing the clearest timeline to date on when operations at the mine may begin after years of delays. There was no immediate comment from Lydian Armenia, the company with the rights to the mine. Lydian broke ground at Amosar in 2016, but development was suspended for several years amid protests by residents of nearby communities and environmental activists. Activists. The Armenian government moved to revive the project last year, signing a $250 million Memorandum of Understanding with Lydian and the Russia-led Kazakhstan-based Eurasian Development Bank. In return, Lydian agreed to hand over 12.5% of its shares in the mine to the Armenian government. The government formally took its stake in the project earlier this year. Lydian is ultimately owned by private equity firms in Canada and the United States, and the U.S. Embassy in Yerevan has described Amosar as one of the biggest U.S. investments in Armenia. The Amosar deposit is Armenia's second biggest gold deposit by volume after the Sotk mine. Operations at that site, which straddles the border between Armenia and Azerbaijan and is owned by a Russian mining company, have been largely suspended since last year amid repeated cross-border shelling. Armenia has considerable deposits of copper, gold, and molybdenum, and the mining industry is one of the country's biggest sources of employment and government revenue. Tunyan, the lawmaker who provided the updated Amosar timeline this week, was speaking at a debate over a government proposal to introduce duties on exports of gold, palladium, and platinum. Armenia already collects royalties on exports of copper and molybdenum. And as always, please follow Civilnet for the latest news and independent reporting from our contributors on the ground here in Armenia.